Amazon's third annual Prime Day was a big deal for the company, but was it a good deal for Prime members? Meanwhile, Amazon is challenging Best Buy's Geek Squad with its own team of installers. Plus, Microsoft releases a new artificial intelligence app for the iPhone. All that and more coming up this week on Geared Up on GeekWire. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. All right, we got a lot to talk about. We are I'm back from vacation, mm. Andrew, and you're here. I got I got I'm sort of imitating you with you my beard. My beard this week. The I'll, vacation beard is here. That's right. And people will hear a little later that Microsoft even agrees with me that you look a little younger with the beard. You might want to keep it. Okay. I'll I'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. See how it goes. Um, the real reason I kept it is I got so much sun on vacation. I'm worried if I shave it that I'll have a, a beard <laughs> tan line. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> so, or just like the skin will just shave off exactly. with it because it's burned yeah. underneath. Exactly. Okay. Well, hey, we got a lot to talk about this week, starting with Amazon Prime Day. Yes. For people who aren't familiar. What a day. Oh my gosh. For people who aren't familiar with this, it's like Christmas in July. That's okay. the gist. It's like Black Friday, Black Friday, Cyber Monday in July. Yes. It's essentially a fake holiday. That's, it's that's not, my it's not take a holiday. On it's it. a sale. It's a sale. Yeah. Just like, you know, Macy's would have their big sales back in the day. Right. And also every store has their sales. This is Amazon sale day. And you know, the reason it's such, you know, it felt like a holiday in a way was because all of Amazon's competitors decided to jump on board at the same time and even use the word prime in their email communications as yeah, well. Yeah, like what? Was it, who, what was one of the companies? Like, that... we're primed to have some great deals today, <laughs> like, you know, Best Buy. or Really, every 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 company that sells something was emailing me with prime in the title. Okay, so, so here's, just, just to set the stage here. Set it up. I bought exactly nothing on Prime Day. That's a failure. It's a failure. That's terrible. And, and I understand that you actually are a Prime Day aficionado. You have <laughs> a specific strategy that you go yeah, in. Now, absolutely. here's the deal. I think that if if you're going in and you're ending up buying things that you would not otherwise get, mm -hmm. I feel like that's a failure. Okay. Where you're just being, you know, sort of prompted to, yeah. to spend money that you wouldn't otherwise. Right. Which, which, which is the case, I think, for a lot of people because Amazon is using these countdown timers. So this deal ends in, you know, an hour. And as it gets closer to the zero, you know, this deal ends in 10 minutes and 82% of it, of the inventory is gone. So you really want to get in before it's gone and you're suffering from FOMO and you, you just buy stuff real quick. That's right. Like, Fear uh, of missing out. Like the umbrella hat. The umbrella hat. The umbrella hat. Does it's he... a hat you put on shaped like an umbrella, <laughs> so you walk around and your hands are free. Okay. So this worked for Amazon. Their sales were up 60% over Prime Day from 2016. Wow. They extended Prime Day to 30 hours this time. Yes. It was more it than dropped a day. early. Yes. Prime Day plus in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and you actually, though, if you feel like you got some good deals out yeah. of this, they didn't take advantage of you. They didn't take, I took so, advantage of them. So let's talk about what you got. Yeah. Okay. So let me open up my Amazon uh, orders page. I'm just going to run this down okay? because um, there's a lot here. I'm going in reverse chronological order. I needed a dash cam yep. or my wife was saying, hey, we need a dash cam. You never know what's going to happen. You know, the, the time where you determine your dash cam is needed, it's too late. You've been in an accident. I wish I had a dash cam. So I paid for the Anchor Rove dash cam. Where is it? $89.99. And the full price is $139.99. Okay. What do you think? Pretty good deal. What do you think? Pretty good deal. There you go. If you were going to get it anyway, I think it's a great deal. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Next up, got myself a little something. I bought myself a twenty-five dollar Amazon gift card. Yes. Okay. Now the re why would yeah, I buy why, yeah. why would I buy myself a gift card? That's silly. Well, the reason is it's strategically Amazon was giving out five dollar credits if you bought a gift card of twenty five dollars or more. So if you bought a gift card for let's just say you know, a loved one or someone else, you would then get a $5 credit on your own Amazon account. Gotcha. Now, if I buy the gift card for myself, I'm just getting myself $5 in free money. Why not? Okay. Why not? So, and, and, but again, you would have had to have been planning to spend that $5 on Amazon anyway. Otherwise, yes, but it was $25. Realistically, yes. okay. we're all buying on Amazon. Not everybody. You do, Not you'd everybody. Okay. But I mean, people like you who missed out. You missed out on $5 okay. for free. That's true. That's true. All right. Next up, I bought a collection of uh, USB-C cables and lightning cables just because it seems like whenever I need one, I have to like go find it in another room. Okay. So I have six cables now. So I can you know place place one in the car, put one in my office, whatever bedroom. You, you know me, big fan of having cables everywhere. Well, yeah. Don't you Power don't want to charge everything? Yes, exactly. You don't want to grab okay. stuff. And then I also bought the uh, a six port USB quick charger. So all of this is tech stuff. All this is tech stuff. Did you just get tech stuff? No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. 
But that stuff I saved twenty uh, percent on. Okay. I bought a monitor stand. Yes. Now that you might think that's something that I just Silly. bought on a whim. Yes. But no, the other day I was thinking because I'm testing out this new monitor I'm trying to review. And it's just a little short, and I was like, I need to go find the Yellow Pages, but they don't even make those anymore. Or maybe they, I don't know. I haven't seen them in a while. Bam, $13.34. Amazon Basics, 25% off. All right, this one was interesting. Amazon is now doing, in case you guys don't know out there, home services. What I mean by home services is things like installing new windows or getting flooring done or getting a, a housekeeper, anything you can think of for your home, Amazon is providing these things. It's not Amazon themselves. They kind of let contractors battle it out on quotes, and uh, you don't have to be involved in that process. And now there's a new twist on this where they're doing smart home installation and consulting. That's right. Now, those actually are Amazon employees. Oh, really? That yes, I did not that know. is the new twist. That I did not it's know. Like, it's like $100 for sort of full-on installation if you okay. want you know, your blinds or whatever installed and connected to your Alexa. Mm-hmm. If you're just sort of you know connecting an app or trying to understand how Alexa works, then it's only $10 so interesting. for a call. But yes, those are Amazon That's employees. So this is some very direct competition with Best Buy's Geek Squad. Yes, it is. Yes, so it is. Especially if it's, expansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. So they had a deal for a certain amount of time yesterday where you can get home services for 40% off. So you would get a, you'd go in, tell them what you need, they'd give you a quote, and then whatever that quote was, you take 40% off the top of that, and that's your price. So I got these smart blinds because I want to be able to ask Siri and Alexa to open and close my blinds, you know, whether I'm at home or away. The normal price was 200 bucks, and I got it for $120. Okay. I, I, need, I have the blinds already. I just okay. need them installed. So, so maybe I need to pay more, t- more attention to, to Prime Day 2018 next year. You needed year. to. So what else did you? Was, so this is all tech stuff, though. Just tech. Well, well, this isn't tech. Well, that was home services. Yeah. Technically, right, I, I didn't true. buy the blinds from them. I just needed someone to install them. What about uh, this? Three giant jugs of liquid laundry detergent. There you go. Now that's what I'm talking okay. about. Now that's Three Prime Day. Thirteen ninety nine. I'm going to buy this stuff anyway. I wash my clothes on a regular basis. I run out of laundry detergent every month or so, right? And I have to go and buy it. I basically paid one month the price of one jug for three. Yeah, there you go. That's, okay. that's a lot. Of, that's that's a great savings. And there's more. I mean, I bought a lot of stuff. Oh, how about this one? I bought a new Echo Dot using my current Echo Dot, which was okay. So the, the fifty dollar Echo Dot was on sale for thirty five dollars. But if you bought it using your voice, using an Alexa device, you got an extra ten dollars off. So twenty five dollars total. Twenty five dollars for a fifty dollar brand new second generation Echo Dot. And the reason I bought another one is because of the whole drop in thing. It becomes, you know, I don't know if you've been using it in your house, but it basically becomes uh, an intercom system for your home. So I could just put one in every room and don't have to, like, yell or text people anymore. So a couple points on that. First, the Echo Dot was the top selling product of the 2017 Not surprised. Prime Day. Not surprised at all. Yeah. And also, the, yeah, that drop-in feature, I actually uh, installed an Echo Dot at my mom's house. It's okay. Installed. I plugged it in. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, I, yes. and my bro- we'll talk about this later, but my brother-in-law saw it and ordered his own Echo. A full size. A full sized Echo. And so we were trying the drop in feature. We had a hard time getting it to work. Although mm. part of that was just sort of, I think, you know, family impatience. I don't have sure, a, I don't sure, have a sure. lot of it. I don't have a lot of right. patience. Because of the beard now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just moving on. <laughs> so but yeah, just uh, so that's that's the whole that the drop in feature though is very interesting. So you got another Echo Dot. That's right. To do that. Using my current Echo Dot okay. voice, ten dollar savings. There you go. Half price. So uh, See, I still have a problem with this. Just overall, it feels. Do you have a problem with any of my purchases? No, I, your purchases seem great. It just feels like you're spending a lot of money because Amazon says you should on this day, and it, it makes right. me feel like it makes me feel like they're even even in more control than they already did are. Did I spend a lot of money, or how, did how I much spend did, would you little s- money? Oh, well, I spent I much less than relative. I would because this is all stuff I would have spent anyway. True, just you know, at different points. D- did you really need all those extra USB C cables? Those were convenient to have because yes. I've, I've actually been, it was a nice to have. It was actually to something have. where before Prime Day, I said to myself, "I hope there's a sale on these charger cables on okay. Prime Day." So um, it was something I was actually looking out for. It wasn't something I noticed and just bought. Okay, well, it's interesting in part because you know Amazon did not invent this whole idea. Right. Of, and, and really, a, a, a lot a of day it. They have a sale, that, is what you're saying. Yeah. And as you were saying, you know, department stores would have yes. done this, you know, Macy's, whatever. But online, you know, the, the real phenomenon was started by Alibaba with Singles Day. What is this? I don't so even know what this is. Singles Day is a tradition in China 
where you basically buy things for yourself and for others. And it's it's very similar to Prime Day, okay. where you get discounts. It's huge for Alibaba. So Amazon, in some ways, is following in, in their that model. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, so that is a wrap-up of Amazon Prime Day. We will give you a little bit more of a heads-up next year so you can try it out for yourself if yeah. you want or not, or not. You're, you're missing out if you don't, but whatever. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you what to do. <laughs> All right, coming up, it is going to be a lot of fun with Microsoft's brand-new artificial intelligence app mm-hmm. for the iPhone. You are listening to Geared Up, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Geared Up on GeekWire. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. All right, Microsoft this past week came out with an interesting new app. It was interesting for a few reasons, one of which was the phone that it came out for. This is not on a Windows phone or an Android phone. Windows phone is dead. <laughs> or Windows that. 10 we or know that. tablets. They came out with this new app called Seeing AI mm-hmm. for the iPhone. Which for the iPhone. Is just the latest example under Satya Nadella of Microsoft embracing a bunch of different platforms, perhaps being really pragmatic because we probably wouldn't be talking about it if it was on Windows Phone because we wouldn't be using it. Absolutely. But it's also it also makes sense because iOS is the one mobile operating system that really is, you know, we don't see it because there's not really a need for us, but it is extremely friendly for accessibility. There's a lot of accessibility features built in. Therefore, a lot of people who need those features tend to skew towards using iPhones. So an app like this makes sense to appear on iOS first. That's a good point. So to your point, this app is designed, initially at least, for the visually impaired. Yes. And in that way, it's a really interesting example of how technology can augment humans because it's providing a bunch of different things that people who can't see or who have trouble seeing would not otherwise be able to do. For example, it can scan a room and tell you roughly what's happening in the room. Yeah, It can scan a person and take a picture of that person and tell you the person's approximate age, their general appearance, like whether they have a beard or glasses, right, and all sorts of other things about them, including their expression, their facial expression, to tell you whether they're angry or not. And it's it's a cool app. Like, we're going to play with it in a minute. So, obviously, it's it's targeted towards those with uh, visual impairment, but it is a pretty fun app just to get. So, even if you're not visually impaired, you might want to download Seeing AI to check it out. All so right. what are we going to do? How does this thing so work? So let's try it out. So I'm opening it up on my iPhone right now. Okay. Opening up Seeing AI and getting back to the thing. So one. So here's one example of what it can do. So we have a sign in front of us. Okay. The sign says, uh, what does it say? It says Infinity Calendar Today. Got it. Okay. So show that to me, Andrew, and I will pull up the short text feature on this. Calendar Today. Calendar Today, infinity calendar. Today, infinity calendar. Today. Okay. So that's so, what it says. So there you go. So you can see it basically just, if so say for example, you were going to a bathroom or something like that and you mm-hmm. wanted to know which bathroom do I go into or right. going to a conference room and you want to know which conference room it is and there was a sign outside. That's the whole idea there. It also has a document feature so you can scan a document very easily. Okay. And one of the things it does, for example, when you're scanning a document is it tells you the position of the document in the frame of the camera in the app so you can essentially tell how to how to position, position it before you yeah, take the picture. Yeah, that's cool. So it also does some some uh, barcode scanning. So this is you know pretty standard stuff that comes okay. with it. So why don't you hold this up? So just so folks know, we've got a Expo whiteboard uh, cleaner here in front of us. Processing. Expo dry ray surface cleaner, eight ounces spray bottle. There you go. That is pretty spot on yeah, right pr- there. Pretty And pretty quick. Of course, no, that's you know pretty standard stuff. Yep. I mean, most apps do that. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. There's another channel, as they call it, called person person so let's see what happens with this okay so andrew's sitting across the table from i'm right me. here one face near center two feet away so it's positioning you in the frame so now one face near top edge two feet away so you're in the center so processing 36 year old man with a beard looking neutral mm. 36 36 that's interesting because in our tests prior to going on they had you at 41 right yes it did so let's yes, let, let's talk that through it 36 so, is correct 36 is absolutely is it spot, is on spot on correct correct yes wow but before now, 30, 41 was not correct i will say this that maybe this is a, a cue for you andrew and your selfies you're looking down a little bit in this photo oh i need to keep looking down yeah you're okay. kind of doing you're doing the, the okay the, the selfie down look okay and and there it thinks That's, you're five years younger got it got it so keep my chin <laughs> down so but let's go through this 
age, 36-year-old man, gender, yep. Yep. with a beard, it has your facial characteristics, Correct. looking neutral. So neutral. it's saying you're not looking angry or happy. Okay. Or happy, okay. Now, now you try it on me here. Okay, I'm going to try this on you. Okay. Word, remember, and I'm going to smile. I'm going to smile. Earlier, we talked about Todd's new beard and how it makes him look younger. So we're going to see. One face near top edge, two feet away. All right. One face near center, two feet away. Okay. Processing. 44-year-old man with a beard wearing glasses looking happy. Okay. Okay. Where's that? Where's that? that? I think that's exactly right. If I'm adding up right. You think. You're not sure. How old am I? Let's see. No, I have not (laughs) yet turned 44. I will turn 44 in September. Okay. So it's close. Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's close. So, so and it, it knew it recognized even with this sort of weak stubble that yeah. I've got, it recognized that I had a beard, that right. I had glasses, and that I was looking happy. Right. You were smiling. I was for smiling. The picture. So this is some pretty cool stuff. That's cool. Point it at Claire. I want to see okay. what happens when you point it at Claire. Okay, Claire Claire is a Geekwire producer who does the show and right. she is across the table. Let's across the see. table. All right. One face near top edge five feet away. Claire looks happy. Claire, look mad. Twenty seven year old woman with black hair wearing glasses looking happy. What? So the age is a little high. <laughs> the age is high, <laughs> but but everything else is right. Black wear, black hair, wearing glasses. You look you look, you look mildly b- bemused. Look I would ha- say, <laughs> 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 which I guess translates in AI to, to looking happy. Now and, earlier it said she was using a laptop, which was also cool. no no. So that's this that's a different channel. Oh, so so that's the scene channel. So okay. let, let's try that right here. Going to the scene channel. Scene beta. Processing. A woman sitting at a table using a laptop computer. So That's it'll basically describe cool. the scene for you. Let, let me see what it does when I try All right. All right. do you in the scene, Andrew. I'm putting my chin up this time. Processing. Probably a man standing in front of a computer. Probably. 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 Pro- I'm probably a man. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> no, I think I don't think the gender was the probably. The, the probably was modifying the sitting in front of a computer. Uh, then, you would, then you should have said a man probably sitting in front of a computer yeah, rather than probably a man. So, <laughs> so that is Microsoft's new Seeing free, AI app. Right? It's a free app for iPhone. Uh, there are going to be some new features coming out in okay. this, including the ability to detect currency valuations. No, not like at the Fed or something, but <laughs> literally you, if you have some cash sitting yeah. in front of you, you'll be able to scan it, and it'll tell you if it's a $5 bill, $20, one. And uh, so that way, you, you know, right. so again, if you're visually impaired, exactly. you'll be able to, That's, to tell what denomination of bill you have. That's a huge deal. That is. That's very cool. Uh, people who are blind will often, uh, you know, fold corners of bills in specific ways so they know, but you still have to know originally what yes. the bill is to, to be able to tell. So you've got Microsoft here rolling this out, mm-hmm. competing essentially with Facebook, Google in the broader AI sense. Yes, in but, a way. But it is interesting to see Microsoft get more of these research projects out into the hands of people because in years past, a lot of this stuff, you would like see it at their... Microsoft Research Tech yeah. Fest, you right, know, their right, science right. fair behind the scenes. You'd never actually get to use it. So that is another big change right. here from the company. It's interesting, though, that, um, you know, they, they called it Seeing AI. The app is branded as such. And because of that, like, I just feel like if this was an Apple app or a Google app or maybe even a Facebook app, um, we'd be seeing so much more press and so many more people downloading it to try it than just, you know, Microsoft Seeing AI. I'm not sure why that is. It's, any, it's any still a little nerdy and wonky and a little behind the scenes. Yeah, the brand is a little different. You okay. know? Even with things like that uh, Clips app from Apple, which wasn't all that <laughs> right. groundbreaking, there was a lot more buzz around it. So yeah, I think Absolutely. Microsoft still has some image issues to work out on the specific topic that you're talking about. Yes. All right. We will be right back on Geared Up with a conversation about my vacation and Andrew's MacBook. Yes. Trust me, it's going to be good. Stick around. All right, welcome back. It's Geared Up on GeekWire. I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. All right, Andrew, you had a really interesting experience with Apple tech support. Interesting, yes. So, And I just got back from vacation. Mm-hmm. So let me share my story first. All right, and then you we'll have interesting end- stories with tech support as well. Yes, exactly. All right. All right, so I had a few observations. We went to California for vacation. Super, nice. Super hot. Oh, man, it was burning up down there. Oh, I'm sure. We, we went camping at Black Butte Lake in Northern California. It was 107 degrees. What? What are you with doing? like 20 to 30 mile an hour wind out Wait, there. Wait, what? It that was crazy. Terrible. It was crazy. The evenings were beautiful. In okay. fact, I got some great pictures. I really regretted not having an iPhone 7. So the evening means 
was like from 8 p.m. on or it something. It was basically from 8 so p.m. on. So from 8 p.m. on, it was beautiful, but the rest of the day, was, it was, we were suffering. It, it was a full moon, and like it came up wow. right right over you know where we could see it yeah. in line of sight from That's our campsite. Cool. It was gorgeous. So that kind of made up for it. At any rate, I have, I'm on T-Mobile, as I think a lot of folks out there know. Because yeah, I talk about it a lot. You're you're on well, T-Mobile yeah, too. Yeah, I'm on T-Mobile. Great deal. Great deals. Great, great deal. Cool stuff. I I it was a total T-Mobile fail Uh-oh. for me on camping. Uh-oh. So Northern California, T-Mobile, no coverage. Well, at at the specific location we were at, okay. at Black Butte Lake in Northern California, mm-hmm. at the Buckhorn Recreation Center. Ooh, that sounds fun. <laughs> zero zero coverage. No coverage at all. I didn't even not have even like one. edge. Not not one. Oh. Nothing. My buddy Carl, my uh, childhood friend who okay. uh, went camping with us, he and his family went camping with us. He and his wife were on Verizon, four bars of LTE wow. in the so, exact same So basically, same no spot. trouble at all. Exactly. Wow. So I had promised my mom that I was going to be texting her, you know, just to let her know that everything was okay, you know, because you know, out, childhood out in the friends, you have to like regress. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I was like, Mom, it's Todd. I'm on Carl's phone, <laughs> and uh, everything's okay. You know, it's hot, but we're good. Okay. And then the next night, I actually tethered to his wife's phone to be okay. able to send a text. That's on what I was going to say. Like, Carl's not a good friend if he didn't just let you tether a little well, bit. But come on. <laughs> it was. At any rate, so that was my one uh, one vacation. John Ledger, what's up? What also, are you doing? in the family tech notes, uh, I got my mom an Echo Dot for okay. Mother's Day. She saved it for my visit. I set it up. <laughs> they love it. They love talking to Alexa so far. I, was I love to... when moms save the tech you buy them for when you show up. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, you know, so I recommend. I told her like, <laughs> okay. it, it takes a little bit of work in the app. Fair to, enough. To fair enough. Out. I was able to set it up, connect it really nicely uh, with just a simple audio cable to their existing Bose. Mm-hmm. So that's really the best scenario for an Echo Dot when you have a good good sound system yeah. nearby that you can use it with. It was funny, though. My brother-in-law went over. My mom gave him a little demo of Alexa, and my brother-in-law promptly went out. Your and, mom gave him the demo. Yeah. my mom. Yeah, I, I like it. Yeah, exactly. I, like I actually it. was not there when my brother-in-law visited. Okay. My brother in law brother in law went home and uh, immediately ordered a full echo. A full echo. So not just an echo dot. He okay. ordered a full I echo. I hope he got it on Prime Day because it was half price. He did not. It was He'd, half price. I, I tried uh. to tell him I tried to and they had a Bose too, like a Bose speaker system uh-huh. that they could have plugged into. And I was like trying to explain it to him, like you really shouldn't have gotten the full echo. Yeah, you should have yeah. gotten the echo dot. You should have gotten it for twenty five bucks, not fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And certainly exactly. not hundred and eighty. Anyway. Oh well. But it was interesting to me that it was very much like a keeping up with the Joneses thing. And mm. then I went to Carl's dad's house, my boyhood friend's Uh-oh. dad's house. I was a very family vacation. Yes. Here. He had an Echo Dot as well. It made me realize that, you know, like sometimes we feel we're in the bubble here in Seattle, you know, right. Amazon bubble, the tech bubble. But a lot of this stuff, you know, many, many people out there have Prime and have the Echo. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you, you mentioned earlier when we were talking about Prime Day, you know, the number one seller was the Echo Dot, right? And I believe last year, Echo devices were either the number one or number two seller last year as well. And Amazon isn't just a techie destination. It really is more like an American destination. So when I hear numbers like that, it tells me that it really is reaching outside of the bubble that that we're in. Yeah. So, and then my one last thing, I asked my 20-year-old niece, which fa- which is the app she's using these days. Okay. Like WhatsApp, Snapchat. Right. Facebook Messenger, like what's she using? And she looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> she okay. said, why would I use any of those when I can just text? And that was eye-opening to me. Because, you know, good old-fashioned texting mm-hmm. is still still seems to be just sort of the default. What phone does she use? She has an iPhone. Okay, so she's not, ta- she's iMessaging. She is iMessaging. Which is a okay, difference than text. Fair enough. It is just, it happens to be integrated into the yes. native text app. Yes. But Technically, the reason, though, she's iMessaging. Right. The reason I say that, though. Well, she's iMessaging with her friends who have iOS devices. Right. She's not with people who don't. So what I'm saying there is iMessage, almost, Apple almost uses iMessage as a lock-in. iMessage is more than just text. Uh, it has so many more features than just simple SMS. Uh, that it's something that when you when you're thinking of changing platforms, it actually is one of the things you have to consider. Do you want to lose out on all the features of iMessage because texting is such a big deal? Um, you're going to lose out on a lot of those additions, especially now that they have iMessage apps and everything like that built in. So, um, you know, I think the most people do see it as just this is my texting app, but they don't realize that a lot of the fe- the functionality within the texting app isn't actually text messaging, but iMessage. Yeah. All right. Okay. 
Those are my notes from vacation, my tech notes from vacation. Okay. Let's see. And I, by the way, also, I do have a lot to say about Uber and in-app tipping from my vacation. Oh. But we can save that for another show. I mean, that's very interesting. Yeah. So I want to hear about your MacBook. My MacBook. My MacBook Pro. Yes. My MacBook Pro. So I had, you know, we, we run the show pretty much off my MacBook Pro in the last few weeks. I don't know, maybe for a month or so. It just wasn't acting right, right? Like, you, you were, obviously, you're here. We're trying to live stream, and things weren't working when they should have been working. There was no explanation for why, you know, we were having problems. And so, eventually, um, my MacBook Pro would not boot up. This is a 2016 MacBook Pro with a touch bar, so the first model that was released at the end of last year, about eight months ago. So, when it's not booting up, it's like, I have to take it to the Apple Store now. I can't fix this. It's a laptop. So, I bring it in. Um, they do some diagnostics. They install a new copy of OS X, so they get it working. The installation goes through. It reboots, and after it reboots, it just reboots to a question mark or something, or like a not OS X, Mac OS, Mac OS, yes, Mac OS, uh, yes, yes. So um, Sierra probably Sierra. So yeah. it boots up, and it says there's no operating system that we can find here. So like, okay, unfortunately, we can't fix it in the store. We have to send it away. And it'll take three to five days or something like that. It's covered under warranty, but there's just nothing we can do here in the store. So I'm like, all right, like that sucks. Um, and that actually on that day, I was going to come here to live stream. Yeah. And, I, and I showed up with no computer because yeah. Apple couldn't fix it. So a few days later, they call me. Hey, your, your, your uh, MacBook Pro is back in the store. Why don't you come on in and pick it up? Fantastic. I come in, pick it up. I don't open it or turn it on or anything. I don't know why I didn't think to do that. But they're like, here it is. Um, it's all good. Sign here, etc. So I sign it. I sign. I walk out the front door, and about ten steps outside the front door, I just kind of look down at it, and I notice on the corner there's like a huge dent, like right here. It's like pushed in, and I'm like, this is weird. Like, That's not right. Right. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't drop it off with a dent. And on the paperwork before they send it in, they actually do a quick look around and they put on there no visual damage. Um, so I walk back in and I say, hey, I just walked out of here like maybe three seconds ago. So I didn't take this home or anything. I just picked it up from service and there's this dent on here. And this wasn't here when I dropped it off. And they look at the notes and they're like, okay, this says there was no visual damage. So the guy's like, oh, this sucks. Well, we're going to have to send it back in. Oh, It'll be three to five days. Oh. Um, and we're going we're going to. Um, no. Yeah, we're going to we're going to replace the. Replace the body, replace the chassis. Oh, man, right? I feel your pain. Okay, now, okay, keep going. So I'm like, okay, this is... So, but I, on that day, so it was another day. I was in a rush to go somewhere. So I was like, okay, I don't have time to this like... This is another three to five days later. Yes. So it's like, I don't have time. I think we were doing GeekWire again. Yes. So this is another day where I'm like, I have to get out of here. It's your trip to Seattle. Yes, it's my trip to Seattle. I don't have time to like, you know, because I'm not happy with that answer. But I don't have time to be like, let me talk to a manager or whatever. So I'm like, all right, three to five days, I'll be back. But I'm going to... I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to just write them later. So later that night, I write them. And I'm not a diva or anything. But the thing with the Apple Store is I spend a lot of money there on a yearly basis. I pretty much buy everything that Apple releases because I'm going to upgrade my stuff and write about it and do videos about it. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm like, I spend a lot of money in this store on an annual basis. And it's just odd to me that... The first issue that came up wasn't my fault. It wasn't anything I did. They found out it was a faulty uh, logic board. And the second issue, the damage, was obviously due to negligence somewhere along the way. And because of those two issues that aren't my fault, I've been out of my laptop for, you know, it's going to be 10, 10 business days or so. Yeah. Um, that's not cool. I have work to do. And this isn't the level of service I expect from Apple, quite honestly. And so, so you wrote this to them. I wrote this to them to the Apple Store, and within maybe thirty minutes, they contact me and they're like, "You know what? I wish you know the person I wrote. I wish I would have seen what was going on. I wish I knew at the time. Um, we would like you to come in. We're just going to give you one of the brand new 2017 models. It was unacceptable what happened or whatever. So I came in, and usually, if you have an issue with something under warranty, they'll replace it with the same thing. So if you have an iPhone six. And right. it's under warranty. They'll give you a new iPhone 6, no questions asked. They don't say, okay, give me your iPhone 6. Here's an iPhone 7. Right. Which is what they did here. They said, okay, your 2016 one you had a problem with. We don't have any of those in stock. We don't sell those anymore. So we're just going to give you a brand new one. And also what they usually do with the iPhone is they just hand you the hardware. Yeah. They don't give you a whole new sealed box. 
But for me, the, here's a sealed brand new computer. Wow. Just take it with you. Um, we're going to reroute the the one that we're working on for you back here to the store. So you don't have to come and bring it to us. Um, just take this. We're sorry. And that was it. Like so, wow. you know, that so to me like a really bad customer service experience turned into got a really turned good around. One. Right, right, exactly. And um, you know, maybe the person that was working there was new. But what I what I found out was basically any physical damage that they do is like considered like the highest level of we need to take care of this customer. Yeah. So when the guy was just like, oh, well, we'll just send it back. Like that wasn't protocol. Yeah, gotcha. He didn't realize. So um, so yeah, it's like that. It's stuff like that that kind of you know makes me you know that made me a bigger fan despite you know the original issue seeing how they're they're willing to like go above and beyond and take care of people do you think that part of this was driven by the recognition that you're andrew edwards the guy on the top of the fold of the I, New I would, York Times. I in the samsung ad it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to say <laughs> no to that i would hope not you know i would hope this would be yeah. anybody that goes in and says uh, you know look at the like look at, you guys i was not treated my correctly here right yes. um i can't say with any sort of 100 percent certainty that it wasn't like well this guy has a platform um but you know i've heard you know actually the next day I saw someone on Twitter say something similar. Um, okay. Their keyboard on their 2016 MacBook Pro broke somehow. And since Apple didn't have the part to fix the keyboard, they gave him a new 2017 model as well. Now, I don't think it was like sealed in the box and right. everything, but it was like, you know, let's just take care of you rather than making you wait for something that clearly wasn't your fault. It was a defect in the product. Yeah, very interesting. Well, it just goes to show that that kind of loyalty is going to pay off much more Absolutely. than whatever cost they incur yes. to make you happy in the short run. Right, so, right. Good stuff. All right, that all you got? That's it. That's all I've got. All right, thanks for listening, everybody. This is Geared Up on GeekWire, and we'll talk to you next week. Until then, I'm Todd Bishop. I'm Andrew Edwards. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for listening to Geared Up, the weekly tech and gadget podcast. Check out more of Andrew's reviews at youtube.com slash gearlive and follow all of our coverage at geekwire.com.